uh, Surge. Hello, everybody. I would like to welcome our guest today, the wonderful bad astronomer himself, Phil Plate. Hey. Yay. Hello. Hello, hey, everybody. And welcome to another desert bus. Thank you. It's lovely to be sitting on the bus. Oh, wait. Okay. We'll just and, give you, we'll just give you one second. We can't quite hear and, you in the room. Forgive engineering us. can hear you. Yeah, but I can't hear you. Mm. Okay, now 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 you should Try be good. Again. Check, check. So you can hear me? Yay! Yay! <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you today? Well, thank you for having me back. You know, it's amazing. We can drive a, a bus across a desert, but we can't ever seem to get Skype to work. <laughs> <laughs> Skype is, yeah, it, it's just, it's just uh, the worst. Uh, I think, I think I've missed Phil's call for the past, like, I don't know, three, four years, maybe. Well, fantastic. Yeah, that's okay. I have to. <laughs> Yeah. I'm glad you could join this yeah. time, Graham. And I'll say this, I do this every year, every single year. Where's Liz? That's a great question. Where's that Liz? is a really good Flood? question. She's never here when I call in. She's, well, she's supposed yeah. to be on shift in about half an hour, so, yeah. uh, so I don't know. Okay. You're saying we've never seen Liz and Phil in the same room at the same time. You could be, are you the same people? Are you Liz? People? Yes, I was uh, bitten I was by a radioactive Liz? Uh, 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 event. Coordinator once, <laughs> <laughs> so when these things happen, I turn into I turn into Liz. Perfect. So if I may, for the people who don't know you, uh, we prepared a brief introduction. Ooh. So wow. Okay. Normally we just tell we just get people to introduce themselves. I have I, a cheat sheet. Really? So <laughs> Phil Plate, the bad astronomer. You can find him at badastronomy.com. Is an American astronomer, writer, and popular science blogger. Plate has worked as part of the Hubble Space Telescope team and has engaged in public outreach, advocacy for NASA missions. He has written two books, Bad Astronomy and Death from the Skies, <laughs> and a book of nerd insults with Zach Wienersmith called yes. Two to the Power of Seven Nerd Disses, A Significant Quantity of Disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> he has also appeared in science documentary, hosted Phil Plate's Bad Universe on the Discovery Channel, Channel. 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 <laughs> oh my gosh, that gives me an idea. <laughs> wrote and hosted the Crash Course Astronomy on YouTube and was the head science writer for the first season on Bill Nye Saves the World on Netflix. Hmm. Currently writing the Bad Astronomy blog hosted on SciFi.com. Did I miss anything? Thank you, everybody. We're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I'm I'm really old, so that's not everything, but it's close enough. It's the it's the highlights. You you know. Great, <laughs> terrific. Anything uh, anything you're. That's it. Are we done? I mean. No no no. Sorry. Really about quiet. That. Great. Everyone now look at Phil, and now we go home. No. Uh, so we're just uh, uh, Serge and Andrew are just arranging stuff over there. The way that we've been doing questions this year is rather than comments on the blog, because we've been using an hashtag. And I don't. I haven't actually. I haven't actually done a call in this year, so I don't know what the procedure is on your end. Phil is actually the first call in of this year. For, Phil's the first yeah. call in. Yeah. yeah. So we're all learning together. Well, this is fantastic. Well, let's start. Well, I can off. see the hashtag here. Oh. I have to do this. Uh, yeah. This Captain Kirk and Star Trek two thing. <laughs> glasses down. Um, so I can. I mean, I can read some of the some of the tags, or you can. We, pick we ones selected that you a couple guys from wanna, there. Well, to start, us off, pardon me. to start us off, is there anything new and exciting you're working on that you'd like to promote? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Good start, search. Yeah. Well, that's awkward. All right, let's go. Um, on. Well, I, uh, you said I'm writing the Bad Astronomy blog for yeah. sci-fi.com. Of course, that's S-Y-F-Y. -Y. Oh, oh, wait. Uh, here. Foreshadowing. S-Y-F-Y.com. Is this part of your upcoming auction lot? Yes. Um, I also have been writing a weekly newsletter, just stuff, stuff that doesn't fit on the blog, shorter astronomy items, personal stuff, things like that. Um, and it's uh, badastronomy.substack.com. The thing to do is to go to about.me slash philplate, and you'll find everything I do there. Oh, okay. Well, right. there's an exciting question from Kumatsu. Maybe we can start it off. What's exciting in the world of astronomy these days. What's got, what's got you excited to talk about science? Um, everything. That's the, 
That's the problem with astronomy. It's basically the entire universe from the ground up. Yeah. You know, ge oh, geologists were so important. It's like you've got this one planet and we're everything else. So, you know. Well, they do the uh, <laughs> Geologists uh, do the ground down. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're well, the ground down. They're the ground down. We're the ground up. Yeah. Um, but I saw you post a sounds, really neat article uh, about uh, uh, black holes and dust on the inside. So, like, really fascinating articles on your Twitter. And I never yeah, that. So it, there's been a lot something. going on in astronomy, and it's it's tough to pick what is the coolest thing going on, and it, not in the sort of breakthrough. If you're talking about recent breakthroughs, I'd absolutely say gravitational waves wouldn't even hesitate. And this is literally the shaking of the fabric of space time when uh, two things like black holes, very dense, massive objects, uh, spin around each other and coalesce. And this, this literally makes the, the fabric of space shake. And this is something that was predicted by uh, Einstein's general relativity in, in like 1905 and had been searched for for a long time. But the technology didn't exist to discover these waves. Um, the, the Laser Interferometry Gravitational Wave Observatory, I think I got that right, LIGO, has been working for years. And then a few years ago, they finally detected these. And uh, they've now we've now detected I think four mm -hmm. that may not be right, uh, and and it's just been groundbreaking. There's been so much new science coming from that, um, and it's really cool. It's like the last untested prediction of relativity that that you know all these things that that we know about time dilation, time moves more slowly when you're near gravity or when you're traveling fast, all that kind of stuff. That's been shown for years, and this is the last thing finally uh, that we weren't able to show, and now now we can. So if it's a breakthrough, I'd say that. Um, if it's sort of what gets me going, uh, it's it's exoplanets. I, I could write about exoplanets every day. Oh, yeah. uh, and sometimes it feels like I am. Um, and these are these are planets orbiting other stars. This is something we didn't know if they existed until 1992. Uh, now we know of nearly 4,000 of them. There are more discovered basically every day. Um, and some of them have been really awesome. Planetary systems around little tiny dinky stars where the entire system of like seven planets could fit between the star and Mercury. Uh, and, and so that's the TRAPPIST-1 system. If you've read about that, you probably have. Everybody's talked about it. Um, Vulcan, a, a planet around 40 Eridani A, um, which is a star that is canonically Spock's home star in Star Trek. <laughs> and we found a planet there. <laughs> mm, that's uh, and there's, more stuff, that's there's more stuff all the time and I, I just I get really excited to write about it every time I get an email about something about exoplanets I'm like Ooh, yes there was, a, there was a fun question like that which was um, as far as sci-fi goes who's the closest like we, we found Spock's planet is anything like do you have a favorite from fiction or something that you're hoping to find or that maybe somebody got right Oh, wow, that's a good planet, So, or a good question. We found Spock's planet. It's not really, it's probably not habitable. It's probably, um, I think it's too hot. I need to read my, uh, read the read the stats on it. And it's also a very big planet, so it's probably not terribly Earth-like. Um, uh, um, and I'm thinking about other shows. I mean, we found planets orbiting binary stars. So you have two stars that are orbiting each other. We've known about these forever. Um, they're, they're actually very common in the universe. Uh, about half of all stars are in a binary system. Getting a planet to orbit stars like that is a little tricky. Um, and, and, and you have to think, how, how does it do this? Does it orbit one of the stars, the other star, or both? And it turns out we have discovered both, I, I want to say, cis and trans binary planets. In other words, it's orbiting either one of the stars or it's orbiting both of the stars. We've seen this. And, uh, you know, that's Tatooine, basically. In, uh, in Star Wars, for those of you, you know, Star Wars, for those of you who are not uh, uh, familiar with that franchise. <laughs> Out of curiosity, um, when it orbits both, does it orbit, like, the center of gravitation between the two? Yes. Okay. And that's tricky. I mean, when I was a kid, watching movies and TV shows and stuff and thinking... If you're orbiting two stars and you get too close, you know, how does that work? You're pulled towards one and then the other, and, ah, and, and is that stable? And it turns out, no. no. You've got to be orbiting far enough away that essentially both of them are, they appear sort of close together enough to you 
that their, their difference in their gravity doesn't change your orbit much. So if you're really far away from them, it's almost as if it's one star. Right. And you can orbit that very calmly. You get too close and, and you start pushing and pulling on that planet, you can get ejected. And so uh, it seems likely that as we find more of these, and, and we will, um, there's going to be a cutoff, like basically how close the planet orbits to both stars. And, and conversely, if you're orbiting one of the two stars, you have to be pretty close in so that the other star isn't constantly tugging on you and, and fleeing you away. So we're going to find that there's like this, this uh, uh, Goldilocks region where you can be close to one of the stars or far enough away from both, and there won't be anything in between. We haven't seen that yet, but um, as we find more, you know, we'll be able to build up statistics and figure that out. And you have a certain range of models that that's based off of lunar orbits, I'm sure. Like, when two moons orbit a planet, like, they, they interfere with each other as well, right? That's right. So you have some yeah. idea. Easy enough to predict. Turn the mic on. Oh. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's pretty cool when you start. Uh, <laughs> if you look at the math, and I, I suggest you do, because it's awesome. Um, Newton kind of figured this out, that if you have a massive object and another massive object, uh, they will orbit each other, and you can calculate the shape of that orbit, the period, how long it takes to go around, all that stuff. And you basically, if, it, if those two things were alone in the universe, if they were the only two things, at any given time, if you measure for a little while uh, the, the motion of these objects, you can predict them literally infinitely into the future and infinitely into the past. You know everything about them. The problem is, uh, if you add a third body, another planet, a star, you know, the universe, um, there are subtle effects on there that you literally cannot predict. The, the math, these are equations that, that can't be solved. You can't just write them down, do all the integrals or whatever, and come up with a number. It doesn't work that way. Um, and that's why it's really, really hard for us to do things like predict asteroid orbits really far in the future, or things like that. The, the farther you try to predict them in the future, the more these effects build up. Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, even, um, even sunlight, the solar wind, stuff like that. Very, very tiny effects add up over thousands and millions and billions of years, and it makes these orbits fundamentally unpredictable. Um, on the other hand, if you have something like Saturn, big planet, ring system, tons of moons, they have all sort of jostled themselves and poked each other until they've all settled into stable orbits. And it's kind of amazing. You, you wouldn't think that you could put something like 60 moons around a planet and have them orbit stably, but they do. Now, over a billion years, maybe not, but for the, you know, for, for the next 100 years or something like that, it, the, the orbits are fairly stable. The universe is a, a complex and uh, sometimes very subtle machine. It's pretty amazing to watch it go. That is super cool. Yeah, that, sorry, that was a fascinating explanation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I made it all up, so don't worry. Oh, good, good. Cool. Good to know. Uh, so this is off topic, but huh? can you talk about your goats and, and your love of your whole goat family? <laughs> What's it like to have so many Gee, I wonder so who pets? asked this question. <laughs> who did ask the question? Uh, is he... We have a we have a real goat enthusiast. Yeah, on, on, uh, goes on staff. by the Goat Prince, and he's yeah. not in the room right now. I assume he's listening in the other room. Oh, sorry. Um, I do love my goats, although at this exact moment, uh, it's fifty fifty. Um, it is cold outside. It is snowing here. Um, it is windy. I can look out my window and I can see some of our plants getting blown around. Um, and I had to go out right before this and. Uh, uh, give them their lunch, which is basically a big old pile of hay. And um, it was cold, and I was a little worried that like my nose would be red and runny <laughs> when we started this. So you, you'll probably see these like my nose really itches, it's skin's really dry from all that. Um, yeah, I've got four goats. Um, we moved out into the country, my, my wife and daughter and I, uh, a few years ago, and uh, we live in Colorado. We were sort of near Boulder before, but we wanted to be far away from people and uh, we moved out, and then over, th over time, my wife, you know, we were watching internet videos, and she's like, we need to get goats. And I thought, well, okay, baby goats in pajamas are really adorable, but then they grow up, and they poop everywhere, and you have to take care of them, and it's cold in Colorado. In the winter. And she's like, oh, don't worry about that. I'll take care of it. Yeah, sure. Um, and so we, we got two uh, Nigerian dwarf and two pygmy goats, 
and uh, we keep them. We have a pen out, out back, and we feed them all the time, and they are very cute. They're not, they're not like dogs. Uh, they're not that social, but um, they're a little bit social, and they're just fun to go out there and watch them run around and headbutt each other and do all that kind of stuff. And um, their names, because this is a nerd crowd, um, one of them has a standard name, is Sam, and that's named after a character, I think, from CSI. My nephew named it. Um, we have Sam, Jack Burton, from the greatest movie ever made, Big Trouble in Little China. It's nice. Nice. Um, uh, Dr. Clayton Forrester. <laughs> yep. Some people laughing, of course. Yep. The main character from War of the Worlds. I know that's what you're thinking. Um, and nobody's even laughing at that. Oh, I'm so old. I, I, I did. So old. Um, Clayton Forrester was the name of the scientist lead in George Powell's 1953, I think, version of War of the Worlds, still the best one ever made. Um, and then when Mystery Science Theater came along and, and they, they made their mad scientist character named Clayton Forrester, I loved that because War of the Worlds is one of my favorite movies. So we have a goat named that, and the last goat is Batman. Oh, nice. <laughs> he's all black, and he's the goat of the night. And, and um, Batman. So <laughs> very dirty, dirty herd. Yeah, terrific. There are a ton of unbelievably, unbelievably specific questions and very detailed questions that I'm sure you would crush, but I think there's a question that is perhaps a little bit more optimistic and uplifting, which is how <laughs> can we light a spark in the next generation for science from Sebastian? Ooh. Ooh. That's a good one. How do we do that? Yeah. Oh, golly. You know, if I knew how to do that. <laughs> uh, that's a that's a tough question. Um, you, it, you don't know, and there's not an answer to it. Uh, it it's like saying, um, you know, what should I eat? And it's like, well, you know, what are you doing? Are you a weightlifter? Uh, are, are you just, you know, sitting around watching TV all day? It, the, it, it, are you diabetic? You know, are you lactose intolerant? It, there's different foods for different people, and there are different types of education to feed your mind. Um, I am not the kind of person who can um, retain information well when I hear it, but if I see it or read it, I'm a lot better. Some people are the other way around. So I don't want to say, we need more videos, we need more this, more that. Um, so it, there, there are different things like that. However, if I were to be very uh, broad, um, what I would say is that we need um, not necessarily fewer people who look like me, but more people who don't. Um, and I want to I want to make that difference because I, I always want more science communicators. It's not like we need fewer white guys out there doing this. No, we need more white guys out there doing this because we also need more women, more people of color, more everything. Um, but if you're if you're talking about how many more we need, we need more of people who aren't as represented as well. Uh, and there's been study after study after study that shows that kids will identify better with people who look like them. Yeah. Um, that's what, a very, a I, I, you know, I have to think that's a very natural uh, function of evolution and biology. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we should admit that and use it. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of this is that I am seeing more of that. When I watch science shows on TV, I am seeing more women. I am seeing more black people. I am seeing more uh, different uh, nationalities than just you know, uh, Westerners. Uh, so I love that. And um, on Twitter, on social media, where if you go look at videos, you, you see who's writing about this kind of stuff and, and who is going out and talking to kids, who's going to the schools, who is um, uh, making the right kind of content for them to consume. I am seeing people um, across the spectrum of, of gender, of color, of nationality, of style. Uh, I, you know, I'm not a stylish person. I mean, and I mean that literally, like fashion. I mean, for God's sake, I'm wearing a Star Wars t-shirt. Sure. <laughs> uh, but uh, there are um, uh, mostly women out there who are doing stuff that, that are about fashion and science. Hmm. That's great. Hmm. Uh, you know, if you can do food in science, that's great. If you can do something in science, that's great. It, it spreads things around. And I think kids get that. And the bottom line is... To, to add to this, God, I swear I can't say my own name in under 20 minutes. Um, every answer is really long. The <laughs> other important thing is, is just passion. It's yeah. just saying, this is great. This is so much fun. I love doing this. You know, do you like puzzles? That's all scientists do is solve puzzles all day long. 
Um, that's, that's a lie, by the way. We mostly sit in front of a computer and wonder why our software is not working. Um, <laughs> but, but that sort of thing, you know, kids respond to that. And, and so uh, I think that's just, um, that's the way to go. And, you know, whatever else you can do there to fill in the details on that framework, uh, great. That's fantastic. Thank well, you. You've definitely Thank got the, the passion part covered there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I do like this stuff. <laughs> uh, could you maybe walk us through what you're, uh, you've prepared something for an auction, if that, is that right? Oh, well, a little bit. <laughs> I kind of wish I could just tear the camera off and scan my Yeah, desk. show it around. Um, yeah, I have to take my glasses off or else I can't see what's up close. I've just got a big pile of stuff. I collect Ooh. stuff from, very, you know, when I go to conventions and stuff gets sent to me and different things. I've actually, so I've got... I've got some, some fun swag here. I've got a baseball cap, all black. I don't know if you can see, but it says sci-fi on it right here. Yeah, oh, very cool. cool. Yeah. I got that when they when they hired me. Um, I have another hat from the European Space Agency celebrating the 100th launch of the Ariane 5 gigantic wow. rocket ship. Oh, that's so cool. That's kind of neat. I can't put that one on. And I've got more sci-fi stuff. Yes, um, laptop decals that say sci-fi. There's a robot. Uh, somebody's hand coming out of the ground beats me what that's all about. <laughs> I'm guessing zombies. Those are um, at a Star Trek convention, I picked up little tiny adorable Star Trek watch boxes. Oh my god! <laughs> and I've got a bunch of them. There's there's the man himself. Um, putting stuff aside here so I don't get it mixed up. Look at this. Kids still do these, right? The fidget spinners? Yeah. <laughs> no? So yeah, probably not. But I have a sci-fi fidget spinner anyway. Um, a lovely picture of a natural arch, a photograph with uh, oh. uh, Jupiter over it. A book about the aurora. This is beautiful. Um, taking lots of pictures of it. A notebook, just basically a blank notebook that came with some software that has a moon, moon theme. Night sky trading car or, or, or playing cards. Ooh. Did you want this much detail? Yeah, yeah this yes. is great. Yeah. Uh -huh. Check it out. Cards Against Humanity Science Pack. Nice. Yes. And here, um, I helped with this. Um, Zach Wienersmith and I and a bunch of other people they, they wanted to talk to, uh, 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 we helped with some of this. That's one of Zach's drawings there. And um, they did not take the card I really wanted which was an answer card, and it was Neil Tyson's mustache. <laughs> but that is the, that's one of those cards you can play almost any time, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they, they didn't like it, so we never got that one made. But the rest of them are still pretty funny. Just a ton of stickers, buttons, um, another them. notebook that was from the Ariane 5 launch, and then the cool stuff, not that that's not cool, Sci-Fi sent me some Apple earbuds, oh, Bluetooth cool. earbuds, really? right? in a little sci-fi 25th anniversary, I mean, it looks like dental floss, right? It's got this, this thing there. <laughs> wow. But these are from Apple earbuds, and they come in this uh, commemorative sci-fi box. So that's there, and then, as I do every year, I will sign a copy of my Pulitzer Prize winning, wait, no, a non-award winning book <laughs> Scott, all the way to the universe is trying to kill you. Uh, whoever wins the, uh, whoever uh, buys the auction lot, I will sign this to you and write something snarky in the cover. And oh, there it is. Yay. Can you see that? Yeah. That is a meteorite. Holy moly. Wow. Nickel iron meteorite, the spell from space, slammed into Russia in the 1940s. And uh, it's nickel iron. It's actually, you can, it's quite dense. It's not like, oh, it's really heavy. But for its size, you can feel it's it's solid metal, and I have a little one-page write-up that I will I will write to you and, and sign it uh, again to the win. Uh, so there you go. That's my lot. That is wow. an incredible lot. So uh, yeah, it's also, oh gosh, it's a piece of there's, and there's a couple other miscellaneous things. I'm finding them under all the yeah. debris on my desk. So and Chad, do you want to own a piece of space? Because now is your chance. Very, very generously donated by Phil Plate. We have the Super Science Lot. I don't know if there's an actual official name for it. I just named it. Oh, I, I uh, called uh, it the uh, Phil Plate Lot. The Phil Plate Lot. I've got, I've got another <laughs> one of the human beside me. You wanna, you wanna say hello? You got called out for not being here the, earlier. I'm sorry. Hey, fellas, Liz. Hey. Liz. I was here the whole time. 
It's, <laughs> it's, it's the best. I'm, I'm actually good I'm, astronomy. I'm, I'm waiting for uh, the website to catch up. It's on a little bit of a delay here, so on, on my end, so I can see you. Because uh, otherwise, you're this big on my screen. <laughs> Engineering, are we ready to begin this live auction? Oh, oh. Wait, no. oh, oh. Ashton to engineering, please. <laughs> <laughs> We're having one minor technical issue oh. trying to get this live okay. auction going. This and is not a human resources. This is not a, yeah, this is not a technical <laughs> issue. It's not a human resources issue. Yeah, this is personnel. Well, oh, Ashton says, Ashton says yes. Ashton's yeah. in the chat. The Ashton is in position. We are ready to do this fill plate. Thank you very, very, very much. Science friends, when you are ready, Let let's, us get, let's go in. Begin the auction! Begin the auction! Oh! 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 The horrible feedback from you guys. It's just like, <laughs> 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 Sorry, we're all like shouting. Shouting. The current it's high bid is over two thousand dollars. Two thousand and forty-eight dollars is the current high bid. There we go. Those of you only bidding one hundred and fifty dollars, you are far behind. Twenty-five hundred dollars is the new high bid from Mr. Snapple Burger. People really want that piece of space fill. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Where is the auction? I'm not seeing it. In the, uh, chat, in the chat? chat? You're, oh, I don't have the chat. You can't bid. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're welcome to try and buy I mean, your yeah, own you lot if you really want to win it. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! Oh, 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 $2,000. So He's shipping it anyways, it's fine. <laughs> $3,000 from 42 <laughs> milliways. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> it's the AirPods, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think the AirPods is really selling yeah. it here. 3005 from I Am Clockwork. <laughs> Chat being very well behaved. No smack talk in the bid so far. Rock, space no, rock. It is. Space rock. And it landed in Russia in the 1940s. That's just like an old rock in general. That's right. very cool. Very, very, very cool. Yeah, I love that the, the high bidder right now is 42 milliways. That's great. <laughs> it's, it's actually, they have now been outbid by I Am Clockwork. Yep. Uh, that I can see with three oh, wait, chat and just five. Screaming. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there hasn't been anyone stepping up in the last few seconds, so we might already be going to a going once. Going once. Oh come on, folks! We can do better than that. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I am. I am clockwork. I am clockwork. Just bid themselves up to three thousand and ten dollars. <laughs> so we'll, we'll give. I am, we'll give. I am clockwork. Another going once. Uh, they said, smack talk, you say, question yeah. mark. And uh, <laughs> we'll see if we can, we'll uh, see if anyone wants to step up to $3,010. 3011 Milliways. 42 Milliways trying to go up to, to 3011 Unfortunately, we go with $5 increments to avoid uh. Uh, to avoid single dollar fights back and forth. Yeah. But let's, so let's see if 42 Milliways wants to take this from Iron Clockwork. Yeah. Everyone's now told them that it's a five dollar minimum increase. Yes. A reminder to those bidding, watch the chat. Do not watch us as things go by very yes, quickly. Yes, watch the chat, not the stream. In the meantime... In the meantime, I think we have to give I Am Clockwork a going twice. I think that's fair. Oh. Snipers. If 42 milliways is still in it, now is the time to take yep. your shot. Get ready to take that shot, snipers. You're going to miss your chance to snipe this bid. I should be looking in the camera, not the chat room. But i got to look at the chat room. This is exciting. <laughs> I know. It's so exciting. I love it. The auction bell is in position. 42 milliways. Uh-oh. <laughs> will anyone step? Uh -oh. Graham, oh. if, you, if you will give the slow countdown. All right. We've gone once. We've gone twice. I think we have presented with no further option than to say, so. so Congratulations to I Am Clockwork, winning with three thousand and ten dollars. Congratulations, I Am Clockwork, and thank you, Phil. Wow. Thank you so much. Nope. Oh. What? Uh -huh. what? <laughs> 
Well, so you got distracted yeah. for a second. Oh, we okay. like, we saw you turn away. It's like, everything yeah. okay, Phil? Can many, we help? Many people, right? many people uh, do love your face palm oh, of a card yes. statue, by the way. Yeah, yeah. just in oh, the background. Yes. Um, this is, uh, I can't remember which episode this is from, where he face palms like that. Um, but um, a renowned uh, geek company, if you think about which geek company that might be, <laughs> um, they sell these. And it's. Uh, <laughs> I made some comment about it on Twitter, how much I love it, and they sent me one. So yeah. uh, I really think it's it's great. It's really funny. I've got a ton of stuff here, um, but it's all facing away. So the camera's facing the wrong way. I've, I've, I've moved into this new office in my house, and I haven't really arranged it yet, so i got to do that. After I clean off my desk, after I ship all this stuff. So uh, i got a, I got a busy schedule today. That's fair. Uh, Kaladinar in the chat was asking if auction totals go to uh, keeping the bus going, and they do. As soon as the donation comes in, it'll you'll see it. It you'll it's, see just it. it's our latest donation. Well, well, exactly. There you go. You can see it there. Yes. That donation right in. Now we have a shift total of over fifteen thousand dollars, and we're at a hundred and ninety-six thousand and twenty-one dollars overall That's for this fantastic. this run already. And wow, 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 wow. Hey, Phil, would you like to take a second to plug where people can find you? If people want to read your articles, if they want to follow you on Twitter, where can they find you? The best way to find all of my stuff is to go to about.me slash philplate, and there are links there. But I write for sci-fi.com. I'm on Twitter as Bad Astronomer. Uh, Instagram, if you want to see my goat pictures, and we have a couple of horses, too, uh, Tiny Elvis and Natasha. Oh. Um, uh, <laughs> I post all those kind of pictures there. I have a Facebook page. You can look me up. Um, I'm debating on deleting that. Uh, so you know, stick with uh, stick with Twitter. That's usually the best bet. That's fantastic. Well, Phil, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us today for generously putting together an auction lot. It really means a lot that you've been coming back year after year. Yeah. Yeah. Not even. It's all my pleasure. I this is something I look forward to every year. Uh, Liz, it's it's uh, it's because of her. Uh, and yeah, the stuff yeah, she's yeah. written and inviting me and how many how many years have we known each other? 75, something like that. <laughs> um, and so I, I'm just thrilled to be able to, to, to help you guys out. What you're doing is amazing. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Well, we appreciate your time. You're wonderful. And I, to next year, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to start collecting stuff at Comic-Con again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Yay. There we go. All right. Graham, do you want to have yeah. some lunch? That's yeah, that's okay. Sounds great. It just feels like my, little... good, my good friend Liz keeps inviting me and she keeps not showing up to my calls. Where's, where's Liz? <laughs> so we keep on his toes. Yeah, yeah. There you go.